everybody, it's Lori again, and welcome back to my kitchen. You guys, I am super, super excited to share this information with you today. I have um, developed a new spaghetti sauce recipe that I really think is going to change a lot of people's lives. Um, we all spend so many hours cooking our sauce down to get it thick. We evaporate all of that moisture off of the tomatoes. Yes, you know, there's your Romas and your Amish paste tomatoes that are a little bit lower um, moisture content tomatoes. And those are really, really super good for making sauces and spaghetti sauce. Um, but the majority of us, I think, have just multi-purpose tomatoes that we grow, um, and those are a lot higher in water or fluid content. And so the majority of us spend days cooking down our sauce to evaporate all of that water off. Now, um, last year I shared with you um, a method that I had come up with um, roasting my tomatoes in the oven, and it only took about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, um, and then you could lift off all of this juice. And I've been doing that for the past few years. I, I, I keep evolving, you guys. You know, I've canned tomatoes for so many years. I just keep looking for better and easier ways of doing tomatoes. Tomatoes are just a huge project for us. Um, you know, we grow and harvest uh, approximately 300 or more pounds every year of tomatoes from our garden. And so this is one of my largest canning projects every year. Um, but anyway, uh, so in my roasting method, you know, it was wonderful because you could just bake your tomatoes for a couple of hours and then you could lift off all of this um, tomato juice and you were just left with this really nice um, drier uh, tomato product and we will put the link to how to do that down in the description of this uh, video today um, but I came up and I developed this new method of making spaghetti sauce now spaghetti sauce is one of the um, largest used tomato products in our particular home I mean we use one or two quarts of spaghetti sauce every week of the year okay it's just you know pasta is just one of those economical meals that fills everybody's belly and I know a lot of you eat pasta also just because it's easy on the budget um, but anyway so spaghetti sauce is just our our main tomato product in our home. I do still make a lot of just plain sauce for use in like sloppy joes and tacos and and you know chili and things like that but spaghetti sauce is just super important to us and I got to thinking a few months back as I was preparing for the tomato season and the rush of getting all of these canned up um, I got to thinking about my particular frustration level um, you know, for years we were cooking our sauce for days, literally days on end. I mean, it is really, it is not beyond the realm to cook a sauce for 36 hours. You know, you have these great big electric roasters or however you're cooking your sauce down, 36, 48 hours and you're just evaporating off all of this tomato water, tomato juice, whatever you want to call it. And you're evaporating it off into thin air. And so, you know, um, just as an example, you might start with five gallons of tomato sauce and you are evaporating for hours and days on end and you bring it down to about one gallon of completed product. So what we're doing is we're cooking off all of this wonderful tomato juice into thin air. Why can't we, if we start with five gallons of tomato sauce, why can't we come up with a finished product of five gallons and so that really got me to thinking all right and I will share more on that once I get over by the stove but for now what I would like to do is I would like to talk to you about tomato mills now I'm sure that a lot of you are very familiar with tomato mills or um, uh, food mills in general um, but some of you maybe haven't uh, ever used one or um, seen one I own so many different food mills Believe me, you guys, I have tried it all um, through my years of canning, and I have all sorts of kinds, all right? I've got the one that goes on my KitchenAid stand mixer, okay? And this is an okay mill. It's not my favorite one, um, but it's okay. It, it works. Uh, to me, it doesn't do as good of a job as the one that I'm going to show you today, um, but... 
you can get by on this and it does work and it is convenient okay and especially if you uh, are looking for an electric device all right wonderful mouth works really good so I've used that one not a real big fan but they do work um, for years and years and years I used this which is a fully food mill and this obviously is just a hand crank type of mill all right now this type of mill works a lot better if your product is already cooked okay so you would cook your tomatoes and then you would put your cooked tomatoes through this mill to mill out the skins and seeds now I'm gonna stop myself right now no you don't have to mill out the skins and seeds if you would rather just pulverize your tomatoes including the skins and seeds that is absolutely okay too but I just want you all to know what I did today in my process so that you can adjust in your own way um, if you try this um, with your own tomatoes. But anyway, so back to the Foley food mill. Now, these works too. I used this for years and years and years and I loved it, um, but it's not as efficient as where I'm going um, in a minute. <clears throat> Another one is I thought, okay, my fully food mill is really old and maybe it's just not working well anymore. I can't tighten it anymore and it's getting worn out or whatever. So I went out and I bought, um, this is an endurance um, mill and it's much like my old fully food, food mill, all right? It's a handheld mill and you just put your cooked tomatoes or, or your cooked berries or whatever you want to mill through there, a cooked item and mill it and it takes out all the seeds all right so those are wonderful things but they are not the most efficient and they are not my favorite thing what I ended up doing this year even after you know years of roasting my tomatoes in the oven and lifting off all the juice I went back to my original thought of hey if I start with five gallons of tomatoes I want five gallons of finished spaghetti sauce I don't want to lift off my juice. You know, we use tomato juice, but we don't use tomato juice as much as what we do uh, pasta sauce or spaghetti sauce. So I want all these tomatoes made into spaghetti sauce. And so today I'm gonna share with you how I make my instant spaghetti sauce, all right? And it's gonna start with a mill, all right? And I'm gonna angle down here and get you aimed on the mill that I absolutely love. And what this mill is, is this is a Weston mill. Now, I think that there are Victro strainers that are much like this model also, but the wonderful thing about this mill is that you don't have to pre-cook your tomatoes at all. You put your raw tomatoes in this hopper and you just crank it and it removes the seeds and the skins and ejects them out the back while you have all of this wonderful sauce here. Now, this model particularly, I, I just think it just does a great and efficient job. And it has a suction cup base. So if you have a smooth countertop like I do, we have an epoxy poured um, countertop. And so this thing, really suctions down really well and that's what I'm using today is the suction cup part but it also comes with a clamp this is just included with the mill and so if you don't have a smooth surface to suction cup this thing down really well you can clamp this right on to any of your countertops or a table or whatever you want all right so let's get to the actual milling process now with my tomatoes i do not even core my tomatoes all right your mill is actually going to just go ahead and remove all of that and eject it out of the back of the mill all right so you don't have to spend time sitting here and coring these tomatoes and another thing is is that if you have skin blemishes on your tomatoes you don't have to cut those off either the mill is just going to send that right through and it's not going to harm anything at all. So just wash your tomato and cut it raw into the hopper. I'll get a few done here so that I have a full hopper full. All right. Now, the only thing that I really do to prepare my tomatoes is I do remove... Um, the the leafy stem all right so i do go ahead and pull those off 
But like I said, I don't core the tomato at all. And if there's a few little blemishes on the tomato, that doesn't bother me at all either because I know that the mill is going to take those out. All right, so I don't think I can fit this bad boy into my hopper, but I'll show you how well this thing works and how wonderful it is. Now, another thing that I do want to say is this is a non-electric mill, all right? So you got yourself one of these nice little handles. This thing is just wonderful for any of you that are living off grid or, you know, are trying to cut back on your electrical costs. This is really an absolutely amazing device. So you have your raw tomatoes up in your hopper and you're just going to have to just start cranking and plunging your tomatoes down into the device. And look at this wonderful sauce that just comes right out. It is skin free. It is seed free. All right, and you can see that all of the skins and seeds just come right out the back of the machine. And of course, you need to have a holding device there to catch all of those. All right, we've got all of that wonderful sauce. Now, you would think that you're done, but I'll tell you what, you can get a lot more off of these cast off skins and seeds. I need to get a knife. Hang on just a second here. And just reach in there and get the rest of those skins and seeds out. Now, you would think that's a pretty good reduction. I had probably about uh, oh, 30 or 40 pounds of tomatoes, and this is a great reduction already, right? And you'd think you're done, but you're not. Take those cast off skins and seeds and send them through this unit one more time, and you will be amazed at how much more tomato sauce you can get off of these cast off skins and seeds. Look at that guys. It just starts pouring out again. Look at that wonderful, wonderful pulp. So you get the idea. Now, this stuff is so much more dry than the first time it went through the mill. It's just amazing how much excess you can get out of those skins and seeds. And if you wanted to, you could even send it through another time. Um, that's totally your choice. But anyway, I am going to finish up milling all of my, uh, all of my tomato skins and seeds here, and then I'm gonna get set up over by the stove and I will share my instant spaghetti sauce recipe and method with you. All right, guys, so I am set up over here by the stove and I just want to give everybody a reminder 
it is, we're all busy in canning season and we are just using our canners constantly, but I took the time to oil my, uh, my gasket seal for my canner today. It's just a reminder to you, do the same, all right? Give your canners some love. They take care of us. We need to take care of them. So this is your friendly neighborhood reminder. Oil your gasket, all right? All right, so I'm going to set that aside. And another little tip that I'm going to give you is uh, regarding um, any kind of a food mill, okay? If you've never worked with a food mill before, I just want to tell you that clean that mill immediately when you are done with it, okay? Don't let this be an item that you set aside and you plan to get back to later, all right? Because you don't want um, the, the little tiny mesh uh, holes. You don't want food getting dried on in there. It is virtually impossible to remove after things have dried on. So make sure immediately to clean your food mill. And what I have found is easiest, especially with this model, is I take a little flat round brush and um, after I have scraped off all of the good pulp from the outside and rinsed it off, I just take a flat brush and in circular motion, scrub the outside of this cone, just in little circular motion. And then if you have anything remaining on the inside after that, just take a regular bottle brush, you know, like for baby bottles and, and scrub the inside of it. And like I said, just immediately wash those things up. Okay. Don't let stuff dry on there. All right. So now we are to the really exciting part. You guys, Lori's instant spaghetti sauce. What you're gonna need is 20 cups. Now this is just rough, okay? You can do 24. Now if you do 20 cups, you're gonna get five quarts or of course 10 pints. Um, I don't suggest working with a batch that's much over 24 or 28 cups, um, just simply because it's easier to work with a, a, a batch of this size. So I have approximately 20, maybe 24, 26 cups. I don't know, we'll, we'll see, but it doesn't have to be exact. But in your saucepan, just put your raw, uncooked, unevaporated sauce, juice and all in there, okay? 20 cups of raw milled tomato sauce, one to two cups of tapioca flour or clear gel, okay? Tapioca flour and clear gel are thickening agents that are canning friendly, all right? And they both, it's, the measurement is the same whether you're gonna use your clear gel or whether you're gonna use your tapioca flour. One to two cups. Now this will vary depending on the amount of moisture or water your particular tomatoes um, have in them, but just have one to two cups available. And then we'll get into that specific stuff in just a little bit. Then you're gonna need just a little bit of cold water to make a slurry out of that tapioca flour or that clear gel. Now, this is where the magic comes in. Our seasonings are measured into each quart jar and I have tested batch after batch after batch and honed in and zoned in on what me and my family feel is just an absolute perfect balance and um, the guys just said that this just tastes like store-bought sauce. And the wonderful thing about this is this is just all dried herbs, you guys, and seasonings that every single one of you probably have in your kitchen. So no measuring out, you know, amounts of peppers or, or onions or anything like that. This is all dry seasoning. To each quart jar, I want you to add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, two teaspoons of onion powder, one and a half teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of brown sugar, uh, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of salt, and one quarter teaspoon of pepper. Lickety split easy. All right, so I'm gonna get you aimed down here and you can see that I have both my canner and my raw sauce in my pan. Now my canner, I am going to start heating that up we will be working with hot sauce, and so we want a hot canner. This is just a simple hot water bath or steam can, all right? We're working with a tomato product, and tomato products realistically only need a hot water bath or steam can. But for right now, what we're gonna do is over medium heat, you get your sauce 
um, heat it up to a simmer. Now remember to stir this because tomatoes will scorch to the bottom of the pan. So don't do it over extremely high heat or you're gonna get burning on the bottom of your pan and you wanna occasionally stir this. But just get this going over medium heat and get it heated up to a simmer. And when that happens, I will be back. Okay, so my raw sauce is almost up to a simmer and my canner is heating. And at this point in time, I'm going to get um, some of my jars prepared uh, with the herbs and uh, seasonings in it, all right? So let me grab my salt and pepper here, I forgot that. So what you're gonna do is just measure all of these things individually into each canning jar, all right? And I've taken all the guesswork out of this for you guys. This is for one quart jar. You want one tablespoon of mixed Italian seasoning. And according to my pan, I, I know I'm gonna get six quarts. Don't prepare, uh, you know, with your seasonings, don't prepare more jars than you think you're going to uh, get out of your batch, but I know I'm gonna get six out, so I have no problem preparing six. So one tablespoon of Italian seasoning into each jar, two teaspoons of onion powder into each jar, let me switch spoons here. Two teaspoons of onion powder. one and one half teaspoon of garlic powder into each jar. I'm just gonna go around and do my one first. And then go back around and do a half. And of course, you know, these can be adjusted to your taste also. But uh, like I said, my guys said that this was just an absolute, almost store-bought type uh, flavor to the spaghetti, uh, spaghetti sauce. All right, then we need one tablespoon of brown sugar in each jar. And this isn't an exact science either. If you get a little bit over a tablespoon, that's absolutely fine. Brown sugar kind of takes a little bit of that sharp acidity taste off of your tomatoes, and it also adds depth of flavor to your sauce. And one tablespoon of lemon juice, and this is bottled juice, just, uh, just to let you know, it's not fresh lemon, I'm using bottled lemon juice. One tablespoon into each quart jar. And then we are going to do one teaspoon of salt per jar. and one quarter teaspoon of pepper. All right, that is it for our seasonings. I'm gonna turn my sauce up a little bit here. Now, I have prepared, well, I have measured out, not really prepared. I have measured out one cup of the uh, tapioca flour. Now, this is where I want you to be really, really careful because this really depends on your tomatoes 
and the uh, fluid, uh, I guess the fluid amount that is in your tomatoes. Now you can see mine, mine are just really, really watery, okay? There, there's just no holding it back in a slot, slotted spoon at all. This is just raw, watery, um, you know, tomato sauce. So I have found that with my particular tomatoes and the amount of moisture in them, that generally I like to have about one cup of thickener. Now what I would like you to do realistically is only add this thickener one half cup at a time, all right? And, and allow it to kind of thicken a little bit and then prepare another one half cup measurement with a little bit of water and, and add that and see how thick it is. If You can easily overdo this, easily, easily, very quickly overdo this. So until you know your tomatoes and how much thickening agent you need in your tomatoes, please do it one half cup increments at a time. But you take that tapioca flour or that clear gel and just add a little bit of cold water to make a slurry, almost like what you do with cornstarch when you're making gravy, all right? And please do not add anything hot to your thickening agent. It will not work. Add cold water, all right? And just drizzle in a little water until you get just kind of a nice slurry. It doesn't take a whole lot. And just whisk that up until it's all nice and uh, incorporated and smooth. Gonna give my tomatoes another stir here. Alrighty. Now I should have this uh, at a simmer or a low boil but um, since I'm already recording, we're just going to proceed. It's hot enough. It's going to work anyway. But I do, I would really rather have you guys have a low boil when you're adding this. Just like when you're doing gravy, like I said. You, you, you're kind of making a tomato gravy is what you're doing with this thickening agent. So make sure that those tomatoes are good and hot and at a low simmer. Now stirring the whole time. Here, I better get my camera aimed back up. Sorry, there we go. Now stirring the whole time, just slowly drizzle your tapioca flour slurry or your clear gel slurry into your tomato mixture. And you can feel that start thickening, even with your whisk. It's pretty amazing. Now you don't wanna get your tomato sauce too thick, all right? Cause you do want, to, uh, want the viscosity so that it can still penetrate, you know, when it's in the steam bath or the hot water bath, that the heat can penetrate through that jar really well. Oh, that's thickened up so nice already, you guys. I'm gonna test that with my slotted spoon just to see where I'm at. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. I think I might add just a little bit more of that slurry. Let this cook for just a minute. You know, let me test that again. Yep, I might add just a little bit more. Now, like I said, you know, this is where you just get to do you and just make it as thick as what you want. you guys that looks amazing now you could just do this as just a plain sauce also 
You can can this as a non seasoned plain sauce. Use it, like I said, you know, in sloppy joes or in tacos or in chili or whatever else. But um, I'm, of course, making instant spaghetti sauce. So I want all those wonderful Italian herbs and the garlic and onion and all that wonderful stuff. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn my heat off now. I've got my nice thickened sauce, and we are just gonna go ahead and start adding that to our jars that already have our herbs measured into them. Bring that up to approximately one inch headspace. And then what I like to do is I like to take a little uh, spatula and give it a good stir to get all of those good herbs and spices off of the bottom of the jar and incorporate it into the sauce. So stir it up really good. I'm going to top off with just a little additional sauce to get up to my one inch headspace. And just like every other canning project, we will simply wipe our rim with a wet washcloth. Place our flat and our ring and get it into that hot prepared canner. Now I'm using my superb lids today and so I'm not going to tighten these quite as much as what I normally tighten other things just because I found that the superb work better if they're if you have a gentle touch with them. All right, our beautiful sauce is going into a hot canner. That I think I can turn down and let's do another one here. Give it a good stir. and top off with just a little bit more sauce to reach our one inch headspace. Wipe our rim. Place our flat and our ring. And into the hot canner. All right, so I'll just go ahead and prepare the rest of these.
All right, guys, so I did get exactly six, uh, six quart jars out of that. Now, like I said, this is just a simple steam can or hot water bath, and I am going to process these quarts of instant spaghetti sauce for 40 minutes for, for quarts. And if you decide to do this in pint jars, you can do your pint jars for 35 minutes and, of course, just cut all of the uh, ingredients in half that uh, go into your jars. So cut your measurements of all the herbs and spices in half for pints and um, hot water bath or steam can those for 35 minutes. And if you're doing quartz, hot water bath or steam can for 40 minutes. So I'm gonna get the lid on this. I'm gonna bring it to a vent. Um, <clears throat> steam canning, as you all know, is my absolute favorite way to hot water bath anything that requires 45 minutes or less. And with our 40 minute process, this is an absolute perfect candidate for steam canning. We will leave the link on how to use your stovetop PC as a steam canner down in the description of the video also. And I will be back in 40 minutes when these are done processing to show you the amazing results. All right guys, so my steam canning session is over and I have allowed my canner to cool and it's time to remove these. And I wanna show you the absolutely beautiful results of this instant spaghetti sauce. I'm telling you guys, this is amazing. No separation, full of wonderful herbs and spices, and just an amazing, amazing spaghetti sauce. As you can tell from the smile on my face, I'm pretty proud of this one. <laughs> like I said, I really think that this is going to change a lot of people's lives. Um, now, if you think about the time that it takes to mill your tomatoes, you know, let's just say maybe a half hour to mill the tomatoes and then the time to uh, just heat up and thicken the sauce on your stovetop and then the 40 minute canning time, you guys, we're taking, number one, we're taking a process that takes days on end sometimes to evaporate off all of this tomato juice and we're condensing it down into probably an hour and a half and we have a finished sauce. And if you also think about it this way, you are expending literally power and energy, energy costs, cooking the sauce down, Plus, you normally, when you're cooking a sauce and evaporating it off, you're taking a product that started out this big and you're reducing it down to a finished product that's only this big. So we have less time, less energy costs, and a lot more product. This is one of my previously done jars that I've already labeled and uh, um, got ready for the shelf. But I just wanted to be able to handle a jar, and the ones that I did in the video tonight are still way too hot for me to just handle and let you see them up close. But I just want you to be able to see how thick and wonderful 
this spaghetti sauce is. Look at all those wonderful herbs in there. And the consistency is just beautiful. And of course, you know, this will depend on how much thickening agent you decide to put in. But this is just absolutely beautiful sauce. And we're using 100% of the tomato pulp and also 100% of the tomato juice. So we are not losing any product at all. It is just fantastic. This way we are able to use 100% and get 100% finished product in our jars. Did you hear that? <laughs> One of those wonderful lids already sealed. Um, I'm using my superb lids like I said today. So anyway, I uh, like I said, I hope you give this a try in your own home um, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, as always, I appreciate you spending your time with me again today. God bless you all and happy canning everybody.